Hi, my name is Elizabeth, and today I'll be talking to you about tokenization, which is a way of keeping data secure. So why should we keep our data secure? Well, it shouldn't be a mystery to any of you that a lot more of our data and information is online. One great example are digital wallets. They may not be as popular in the US as they are abroad, but we do have a few that I think have a following, especially Venmo. I think most of you may be using it. Abroad, actually, they are extremely uh, popular. Paytm in India has um, broken a lot of ground since demonetization last year, and it's becoming more and more mainstream. Alipay, WeChat Pay are almost the, the main way of paying in China using QR codes. And a company called M-Pesa in Africa has actually been bringing banking to mobile phones and helping a lot of people get into the economy by having bank accounts directly on their phone. If you've also been following the news, um, you've probably heard about the Equifax breach, which happened after I made the slides. Um, that also should give you a sense of how much data about you is actually online and how how important it is that you would actually keep it secure and, and trust the providers that they would keep the data you give them secure. But hey, isn't my data encrypted? Well, yeah, most of the time it will be encrypted. So let's talk about encryption. Um, encryption is going to take plain text. So in, in this case, let's talk about your credit card number. Use a key in an algorithm to turn it into ciphertext. This ciphertext is then what is going to be traversing the internet, going from one place to another. Um, in a secure way, you would hope. And then you would have the decry decryption to get back the plain text, in this case, your credit card number, in order for the transactions to happen once this data reaches your bank. So this is great. We've been use using it for millennials. Um, some of the algorithms now are super sophisticated. The keys are encrypted. There's, this is a great system if you can afford to build one and maintain one. So probably Google can, and a few other companies can, but not every everybody can have such a system with sophisticated algorithms and uh, decryption that are safe. So isn't there a way that we could maybe do this better? Is this the best cryptography can do? Well, I think it is the best cryptography can do, but what if we don't even use cryptography and don't have to decrypt anything and have a way to store data online that could not run the risk of being decrypted or intercepted by um, malware or ill-attentioned people. So this is when tokenization comes into play. So what is tokenization? With tokenization, you will actually keep your like the secure data, say your credit card number, in something called a token vault. It will live outside of the system in a secure location. It will be associated with a token that will be given for that specific piece of data. The token is then what's really going to be given to the application and what will traverse the internet and be used by the applications that need your credit card number. Um, well, this is confusing, right? It's like, well, I have a token inside of my credit card. Like, how does this work? So let's look at the tokenization process. So say you're entering your credit card number on Amazon. This is going to be number one, the application server. The credit card number is not going to be stored here at all. It's going to be sent straight to the tokenization server, which is going to be somewhere else. It could be a different company. It could be your bank. It could be a different place of the Amazon server in the case that Amazon uses tokenization. The tokenization server is then going to issue a token for this data and uh, keep both of them in the token vault, the token database at the top. It will then return the token and only the token to the application server. Um, so how is this uh, token used? It's going to use the same, um, the same format as your data. So your credit card number it will look the same. It will just be different numbers. There are different ways of creating that token. It could be a hash function. It could be a, some sort of encrypted version of your data. But most of the case, it's just going to be a random. It will be randomized. There will be random numbers, random data, so that there's literally no way to go from your token to the secure data you're storing. And when someone does need to go from your token to your secure data, there will be several levels of authentication required at the number six over there. So that will be, um, actually, I think I'll move on to my, yeah, my next slide. Um, so there will be a bi-directional authentication to make sure that the authorized application there is authorized to request this, this information. Um, and then they will verify that the data being sent along with the token is the right way. Um, so it'll be maybe a customer ID or a service ID, something that the server is expecting to get along with um, the token to authorize this person to get it back. Um, great. Uh, cool. And then, so then, now the problem is that all your data, instead of being, you know, 
online and um, spending time on different services, it's all kept in a single token vault. Um, so you might think, like, why should I use this? Why would this be a better solution of keeping data instead of keeping it on my server or keeping it in my database? Um, so there are different ways to think about it. If you are not, a, say, a big company who can invest a lot in cybersecurity, then this might be a, the, the right solution for you. You might be able to go to a third party and, and request to have a token vault there if you cannot make sure that you, the, the data you're keeping is secure. It's better to not have any data than having data that you cannot secure. But it's also centralizing the risk. If this token vault now is breached, the risks are a lot higher. So you might have to think about those things when you're making those type of decisions. It is also not going to solve every problem. There's always going to be social engineering that is going to pretend to be you and find ways to get into the servers and, and break those authentication um, that we saw earlier. Um, so yeah, thank you. <laughs> that was very quick. <laughs> <laughs>